I'm great. This is Joe, and this is SPX 2022. I'm great. I'm, you thought that through a lot. I could tell. 2000. <laughs> Buddy, I don't know why. It's, I remember as soon as I screwed up yesterday, I realized this is a bug. This is something I'm not good at. He started an interview off. He was like, welcome back to SPS 2012. And it was like, 2012. Uh, yeah. Just a decade behind. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. I'm early. So, uh, yeah, I'm still Joe. You're still Joe. I'm Rusty. And, and with, with us, us is Claire Connolly. Oh, it's Claire Connolly. Oh. Do you know well, what year it is? Because I struggle. Help us out, Claire. Um, I always know it's in the 2020s, but it's struggling for the end year. We're yeah. in like 2021. 2020. You know what? You're not, you're not far off. That's good enough. You know what? Not enough people do that where they because they talk about being in their 20s. But you don't use that, that broadness when you're actually talking about the date. Just use that. It's in the 2020s. So it's fine. I'm not signing a legal document. I'm fine. Yeah. That's true. But if you were, maybe you could just put like 2022-ish. Just, it's around there. Just a good question mark. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pr uh, parentheses around it. Like, I'm not saying I know. I'm saying I don't know. It's in that range. So it brings you to SPX. Comics, of course. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's a good reason um, to come. And Honestly, human beings at this rate. Yeah, nice um, change of pace. Yeah, you know, being locked away for a few years. But, you know, everyone's always so nice here. So it's just like a nice welcoming environment to like share your work and like hang and all that kind of stuff. Did you miss SBX for the last two years? I definitely did. Yeah. Um, I plan like my yearly vacation around SBX. So mm -hmm. without it, I just felt lost. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know one time, like I usually take a week off. So it's super nice just to be like, here, back down in Maryland, seeing everybody, um, more than just going to people's like Animal Crossing islands and checking it out. It's not the same. No. no. Although you do save on gas. Definitely, and everyone owns a home, which is. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It, and they it's just a nice chop down. World. You can chop down trees in your neighborhood with nobody asking questions. Oh, yeah. And stealing fruit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I already do that. But, yes. That's not different Joe's for me. Joe's an IRL fruit thief. <laughs> yeah, I'm an IRL Shaking fruit. Shaking trees I'm out here fruit, on the patio. I'm a fruit bandit. That's what I do. <laughs> yes. uh, so, um, I don't know. How's it been so far? Yeah. It's been really good. Very, everyone's super cool with like wearing their masks and everything. Everyone's being super safe. Like no one's like sneezing into anyone's eyes yet. Oh yeah. I haven't I seen, mean, I've I mean, there's still a few hours ago, but. I, so I've barely far. seen any of that going on. No. Yeah. So everyone's been super cool. Um, everyone's been super polite as always, making lots of sales, sharing work, doing a lot of trading this year, which is super cool. Nice. Because then I just get to stand there and the comics come to me. Yes. Oh, like a magnet. Yeah. So it's like super rad. I just get to stand there and then, then I leave with a nice stack of stuff. You're like, thank you. <laughs> Man. Thank you. But do you ever like uh, do like a sleight of hand where they don't actually get your book back? Um, I wish I was that coordinated. Yeah. And I'd probably be a much savvier business person. True. Um, but no, I usually give them something in return. <laughs> they get back to their corner and they go, I thought I, like, I'm such a silly boy. I missed out getting in their They comic. come back with an extra copy of their book. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I actually extra copy of book. their book? Yes. I have that three. is sleight of hand. I only had two books, now I have three. So that means she stole it from them originally? Oh, yes. <laughs> Scanned it, printed it, and put it back on the table. That oh, place. man, this is like Ocean's Eleven yeah, shit don't right now. Nice. my table. Uh -uh. There's just goblins doing printing under there. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know they allowed that. I didn't know if we were certified for printing goblins. Yeah. I mean, no one's asked any questions. That's true. And hey. they're very polite and nice. So. Um, well, you said everybody here is nice, so uh, yeah, I'm so glad the goblins, goblins fit included. in. Yep. Uh, I, I know we're here to talk about comics. I'm not. I want to talk about the fact that just last night I found out you guys share a companion in some form or fashion where... Oh, yeah. The, your sister uh, works at a yearbook company that works with my printing company uh, where Joe also works. I also worked there, but I didn't know about this. Yeah, that was pretty great. Yeah. Was like, it like, weird that all of a sudden Rusty was one degree closer? Um, not too weird. Because I'm used to it. Like, how do you know Rusty? Why were you on his Animal Crossing yeah, island? Excuse me, what are you doing on his <laughs> Animal Crossing island? And then he gave me a Godzilla and I was like, oh yeah, Rusty gave me this giant Godzilla for my island. <laughs> and a hot dog hat. Yes. I, oh, this do you have any weird. extra hot dog hats? I might. We'll see. You might, yeah. Maybe yeah. you can hook me up. If you, as long as you didn't shake it on my trees or some shit, I don't know, man. Yeah, he's pretty insidious and he will get everywhere. Yes. <laughs> sneak up, slide into your slide dragon. Slide hand with a hot dog hat. Dragon gifts. <laughs> yeah, now I, okay, I yeah. would imagine it was probably a, a really a life lesson. Like, wow, Rusty's here too, man. It, it's like, a scary thing when I just pop up. You just pop up? Now, I'm just imagining like Freddy Krueger style, like I'm opening the toilet lid and there's a, there's Rusty and I'm like, ah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's happened to me before. Yeah. And it is hilarious. From, from experience. But shocking. Yes. 
You're like, that's the I didn't expect to see you there. It's one of those things where you're like, in the end, it worked out. <laughs> but in yes. the moment, uh, it's kind of iffy. Well, it's like, did you at least clean the toilet no. while you are in there? No. Uh, Rusty, uh, one of the questions in here, spoiler, if you haven't seen it or if it didn't happen, is that Rusty ate chocolate that fell on the floor that was <laughs> wet side down. Oh. Okay, but what floor was it on? It was a like hard, a, hardwood floor. A hardwood floor, but look, like there's... a personal hardwood floor? Yeah. yeah. Okay, no. okay, that's different. And, oh. and it was a piece of chocolate shell, so it was kind of shaped like this. So really, there was minimal surface. <laughs> well, contact. okay. But, but but it was wet side down, and I, I was like, it was, I was, it was off of an uh, ice cream bar. He ate it, and when I saw it fall, I was like, oh, I'm just a shame. And then I saw him start to adjust to go get it, and I had to look away. I like, can't be a party a shame dude. Because obviously you're not going to be able to eat it now. And I'm like, well, and he's like, oh. Listen, well, if it was your own personal floor, if it yeah. was a public floor, then I'd be concerned. Very different, yes. What's the yeah. difference? My germs. Yeah, That's fine. and also too, like if you ate the floor here, all of us have walked on it all day. At home, you you know where you've been. Yeah. But there's only so much variety of dirt and germ that's going to be tracked in by a foot. I think he's going to have the same amount, or not the same amount necessarily, but the same type going in your mouth. I feel like my home has my same level of like immunity that I do. And so your just, home is immune. Yeah. Wow, I didn't it's know. It's the whole thing. It's your home too, so you should know that. I yeah. did, you know as I, my roommate, you should be aware. I'm learning so many things today. It's very exciting. All right, so now back to comics. Yes. Did you bring anything special that you'd like to show off? I did. I always bring things to show off. Nice. So this year I've made a lot of mini comics. That was kind of like my pandemic outlet. I was about to say, you were cranking through some, like, stories. I did. Um, I, this is, like, my only, like, interest to most people's annoyance. Um, it's just making comics. So I brought, um, this is one of my favorites. It's um, more of like an existential dungeon. So as you go through, it's like, oh, a goblin. But then it's like, oh, Dante Alighieri, a forgotten thought. <laughs> Something like a little more abstract. Because I always find it weird when you go into dungeons and there's just a bunch of skeletons. Like, mm -hmm. what do they do Right. when you're not there? Like, do they just wait? They just do they lay have, like, there? Yeah. Yeah, like, what do, what do they do? Do they take up knitting? This is kind of like my answer to that all the philosophical uh, discussions you've never heard yeah, yeah. so i just kind of went through and it was also just nice because i didn't have to worry about an overall narrative so i kind of just like would do like a panel every few days trying to not stress myself out um and then i started making more little mini comics um this one i made after a person yelled in my face so it's kind of like me feeling like a dripping gross monster um and then because it feels like the world's ending I basically made a version of like Super Sentai, except the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Nice. So these are like my two little mini comics, kind of introducing the characters. Um, so it's the Four Horsemen, and they fight like biblically accurate angels, but then also like really abstract things like um, the Seven Deadly Sins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of just like my little mini comics introducing the characters to everyone, and then I'm going to be doing it as like kind of like a style of like a monthly comic series hmm. but a little more abstract and weird have you gotten a lot out of well, i guess what I, what I was going with is during the pandemic did you have a a drop in how much you produce because there weren't like events to disseminate them at um the first year i definitely kind of dropped off because i was just trying to like adjust to the new like daily routine of everything right um i still had to physically go to work so that was like a really hard hurdle for me personally to get and you, over and you don't have to get into it but you have like a public facing job yeah so. so like i work with the public so it was like it took me a year to really readjust and like really push down the amount of bitterness i honestly had over the situation i probably only honestly gotten over that over the past few months um of just like being okay with that mm -hmm. and not letting it like eat me alive <laughs> Um, I did make a comic about my experience um, working in a job, but it was honestly just too hard to keep making. Yeah. So I have it. Um, like, it can be cathartic, but you're also just reliving the same yes. crap that you dealt with in person. Yes. So I made, like, maybe, like, 12 pages, and I still have it, and eventually I think I will publish it, but I think I just need more time to, like, sit with it and digest it because yeah. I would like to write, like, a small little essay at the end. Um, but it was really about, like, the beginning of, like, the not knowing. Mm -hmm. of everything and also still having to really go to work every day and have people treat you like trash because um, I'm an essential worker but not really like the cool kind and the respectable kind mm -hmm. and I was really at like the bottom of 
the ranking of right. society where most people already treated us so poorly to then get treated poorly day in and day out. In, in, in such heightened circumstances. Yes. Yeah. And like, especially at the point where I live, we were really shut down. So it felt like I was almost like, like part of the circus where people would just get out of their house to go like look at us. Mm, yeah. Um, but that's why like really after that first year, I really just got back into making stuff because really that's what makes me happy and makes me feel like as a fulfilled individual on earth, I love just folding piece of paper and making like a little book to share with people. So pretty much after that year, I've really just been focusing on just making like anything and not beating myself up about trying different things too. Like make a zine, make a sculpture, paint a miniature, like just real, and also just really encouraging other people to have artistic outlets mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Just being like, oh, take up knitting. Like I think everyone just really needs a, uh, even just something tactile to do to really help you focus during these times and not get like sucked into your phone. And it's important to be informed about everything, but I think mm -hmm. it's really easy to just dip into a death spiral really easily. Oh yeah, like this, it's, it's overwhelming. And, and like you said, not, not just being able to, to push yourself to create, but having that feedback and that support from other people mm -hmm. and giving that to other people and just creating like a positive circle that goes. And also too, important. being creative. Sometimes it's really easy to like beat yourself up if you're not doing it every day. Oh yeah. But everyone has a different like creative cycle and mine just happens to be making stuff every day. So it's like, I tell people, I'm like, don't compare yourself to me. I draw every day because if I don't, I want to die. Mm -hmm. That's a very serious drawback. I mean, yeah, man, suffering for your art. You know, it's hard. Well, no, suffering without art. That's true. Suffering even more without She's art. She's alleviating with the art. That's totally different. You got it. It is. I, I mean, am. I'm not a Van Gogh. I'm not going to cut my ear off or anything, but you know. I hope not. You only can do that twice. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you, get, you can't, you can't, can't go to, you can't keep going to that well. Well, can you imagine? It's like, the hell am I going to wear a mask? <laughs> oh, it's on. Yeah. All those foolish Van Goghs and the pandemic hit. And they're like, oh, man, I really yeah. screwed myself. How are you going to get through this, buddy? Oh, man, it was bad enough not being able to wear sunglasses. <laughs> oh. And now this. Well, I already need the, the ears for the glasses, so I'd really be doing myself in. Yes. <laughs> That's true. So you got to keep drawing. So I don't cut an ear off. Right. Yeah, that's the only reason. Oh, though. yeah, definitely. Although for glasses, you could like switch to like a monocle or something. Ooh, that'd be classy. Yeah. But for both eyes? It's just the ear that's gone. <laughs> I think, well, I think you just have to squint really hard with both eyes to keep up yeah. your eye yeah. sockets. Maybe you get like a visor that just goes across both. Oh, like, um, what's his face in Star Trek? He had that sick visor. Oh, yeah. Jordy. Yeah. 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 Just nice. go for one of those. All right. Then, you know what? Or bolt it into your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just swap out the lens as your as your eyes get worse over time. I go to sleep. Oh, you won't. Sorry. No, sorry. No. Sleeping is no longer constant like sight. That. <laughs> it's a drawback. Yeah, it is a it's a big one. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, don't. I know you've been looking to crowdfund your new endeavor with your bionic eyes. Yes, but it's it's too much. It's too I much. Can't so, have you uh, seen anything particularly cool this year? Particularly cool this year. Everyone's um, tote bag games really um, on. Yeah. Like everyone has a really cool tote bag. Everyone has a really cool tote bag printed. I think someone made one that just like the, I went to SPX 2022. This is the only I got this tote bag, <laughs> and I just good. appreciated the like on brandness for the event for that. Sure. Um. So it just also just been super impressed. Like everyone showed up with like work this mm -hmm. year. Every table I go to, I've been so impressed with everyone's like output and quality and care everyone's like put into their work so it's yeah. been like super awesome walking around well yep. we have we have a friend that had a book that was supposed to come out two years ago so some of this stuff has just been building up and building up so yeah. they have i mean in theory they have so much stuff that they can show off that was something i noticed in my slight because we haven't had much time to get on the floor but just walking around yesterday is just how full all these tables look you know it, it's like multiple products and like just people really getting into like their layout and like putting everything on good display so people are, yeah they're way into it way into it way into it claire would you like to answer a mystery question i would love to answer a mystery yeah question. let's bring out the quarter, quarter, truck. Truck. quarter truck how many quarters do i gotta put in uh, uh, just, just one you, just, one? just one? one per question yeah oh. the rest oh, is up to you 25 cents we try to keep prices down Oh, thank you for inflation. In, in for this not, economy. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna it also helps that we keep every quarter that goes in. <laughs> it's a closed economy. Am I supposed to do it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what is your question? What's the most annoying sound you can make? 
Hmm. Um, honestly, I think it's my own voice. Yeah. Um, but I think that's too self-deprecating. Yeah. Um, but I do this a lot. I go, eh, when I make fun of people. Oh, okay. So it's probably that. Is, it, probably... is it like you're, you're saying that that's how they sound? Yes. Okay. You know, like yeah. when like, you mock like someone? Yeah, yeah, you have to make them have the most annoying God-given voice. Of course, and some weird affectation that's only annoying. Yeah, yes. that does not sound like them at all. Sure. Because that truly irritates someone when yes. you're not even remotely trying to sound like yeah, that. Yeah, because then they're like, I sound like that. That doesn't even sound <laughs> like me. <laughs> Need reaction. I do not sound like that. What are you doing? No, I make them sound like little magical gnomes. So I'm just like, eh, eh. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that's what magical gnomes sounded like. That's what I assumed yeah. when I look at a garden gnome. They probably have that type of voice. Did you not find out from the printing goblins? No, they don't know the gnomes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not in that circle. I have no idea. And the gnomes are just aren't talkative, so. Well, if they sound like that, that's why. <laughs> you don't know for sure until like they finally say it, but they don't talk much. I wouldn't sound. If I, I mean, if I sounded like that, I'd keep quiet too. That's true too. And then Rusty looks at me and goes, "Well, I hate to break it to Sorry, you, buddy." Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so where could people go on the vast land of the internet to find out more about your work? Um, the best place would be my website. It's just ClaireConnellyComics.com. On there, I have hundreds of pages of free comics, as well as all my social media handles and places where you can enjoy my work on other websites and stuff. Nice. And my contact info, if you'd like to talk to me. Um, I give free portfolio reviews to students, so if you need help with your college portfolio, I'm always there to help and support you. Or if you need help printing your first mini comics, I have some layouts and stuff that I'm more than happy to share with people wow. to get started. Now, so if someone wanted to contact you, is there a topic that you really wish they would ask about? Something you want to talk to people about and they could bring to you? Um, honestly, just comics and narrative. Okay. Um, okay. And anyone who wants to make something like a little weird. Like, okay, so something yeah. a little weird. Yeah, like not too weird. Like don't no, be, just a little weird. Just yeah, a little yeah. weird. Like you know, Nothing maybe crazy. you know what gnomes sound like and. Yeah, scotch weird. Yeah, yeah, and I'm totally off. No, that sounds good. Everybody, go to her. Inquire about making something kind of weird. Know your boundaries. Yes. Nothing and then, weird. then maybe it'll become a comic. <laughs> Well, thank you for talking with us. Yes, this Thanks is great. Thanks as thank always. You. It's always good to catch up with you guys. You too. Have a great rest of the show. Thanks. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry about Rusty. It happens. <laughs> cool.